Jayhawks will be here shortly. Please remember to silence your cell phones. No video allowed in the room other than our friends at Hammond. Start times have been set for Saturday's games. North Carolina and Baylor at 11.10 a.m. Central Time. Creighton and Kansas at 1.40 p.m. Central Time. Both games in CBS exclusive windows. We welcome Coach Bill Self and student athletes from the Kansas Jayhawks. We'll begin with an opening statement from Coach Self and follow that up with questions for Coach Self and the student athletes. In the room we have Mr. Braun, Mr. Harris, and Mr. Martin. Coach Self. I thought, I thought uh, uh, we did a lot of really good things the first half. Uh, thought we, we shared it and we defended and we rebounded the ball pretty well. And, and after we got off to, you know, kind of calmed our nerves down a little bit, we were very efficient uh, first half. And, you know, second half, we, we didn't play near as well. But it was a good team win and certainly one that I'm glad we got, and, and uh, especially in this crazy tournament and this crazy day. And, and uh, certainly looking forward to playing a, a very, very good uh, Creighton team on Saturday. Questions in the room? Start in the front row on the left. Christian, after a day when um, there were a number of upsets, did it feel good to come out and kind of play the way you guys did and not have to sweat it out? Yeah, I think the first half, uh, you know, was great for us. Uh, we played a lot better than we did in the second half. Um, and I think the first four minutes, like Coach said, everybody was a little nervous, a little playing a little tight. Um, but then we, then we loosened up a little bit um, and started playing really well, um, you know, the last 16 minutes of the, of the first half. Next question. Second row on the left. Matt Tate, Lawrence Journal World. Remy uh, came in, spark energy. Uh, this stage, you've talked about enjoying March and, and being out here. What did that feel like tonight to do it with this team and, and to kind of be the catalyst to pulling away in the first half? Uh, it felt great. It felt great. You know, these, these guys, you know, have been, have been very good to me, you know, my great teammates. Uh, I'm just kind of happy to go out there and, you know, try to give it my all and help them out. Um, that's just my goal. You know, my goal is to just try to, you know, go in there and help as much as I can. And um, I think I did that today. But you know, I'm just happy that we got the win and um, it was a collective effort. We, we know that's been your focus. Can, can I ask you to go one deeper? Did you have a favorite moment tonight of yours? Um, no, I, I mean, oh, well, <laughs> I guess my dunk, my dunk, right? I mean, I haven't dunked in, you know, forever, but, um, you know, that felt great. But uh, the moment that I, w I wish could have happened was T. Han making that shot off the dribble. This time was different, so, um, you know, but I had, a good, I had a good time out there. And, and Coach, can I follow that up? Same thing for you. Do you have a favorite Remy moment tonight? I mean, I know you've talked about him I, being I, a I thought, well, he played, you know, almost, he and Juan were about perfect the first half. I think they were like, what nine to ten combined and and uh, uh, but you know I, I I didn't know Remy could dunk a basketball until today so I, that was a favorite moment but the pass that he gave uh, David in transition was was pretty pretty special. Next question here in the room. Front row on the right side. Bill, those early jitters that you mentioned, how much do you think Remy, the, the way he played, I mean, that transition pass being probably the, the first example, just, just kind of allowed you guys just, just to play basketball the way you play it? Well, I, yeah, Remy was great. He came in and played lights out, terrific. Uh, uh, I also thought Juan was good early. Juan made a, made a three early, and then he followed it up with a three later. And, and uh, you know, on, on a night where I thought that from an offensive production standpoint, we had some guys do pretty well, but nobody was really lights out except for those two. So I thought they keyed it more than anybody else. 
in the middle, about uh, so that's three rows back on the right. Aaron Lack, KSHB, this one for, for Bill. You mentioned kind of this being a crazy day, especially in the tournament. Do you feel like a team can feel that if they watch that and maybe that can yeah. impact the game? You, you know, uh, I hate to, to admit this, uh, the last time that I remember playing a late game like this uh, was uh, Bucknell in, in uh, Oklahoma City. Uh, I mean, I remember us getting to the hotel around 12.30 or 1 o'clock in the morning and, and uh, you know, we played so poorly and, and, and they deservedly won the game. And, and, but I, I didn't think like we were going to not win, but I thought it was one of those days. Uh, I, I, th I think these guys would tell you, th uh, playing at 10 o'clock at night uh, after you've been amped up all day, I, I, think, it, I think it's uh, – a, a disadvantage for the two teams that play that late because you can only carry that adrenaline excitement and, and, and be sharp for so long. And I, I do think that that kind of impacted us early. I don't know what you guys think. And then when the game goes overtime and, and the overtime took 40 minutes to play, uh, uh, I think that we were, I mean, we tried hard. We, we were ready to play, but I do think we were pretty careless early on. I have good news for you if you haven't heard it yet. I, it's, it, yeah, it's great news. We get in, we have a pregame meal at one o'clock in the morning, then we play at one o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> Isn't that right? One forty. One forty on yeah, Saturday. Yes. Fantastic news. Thank you for that. <laughs> I thought you'd like the earlier start. Okay, to the left, second row. Bill Jordan, the Topeka Capital Journal. Is Mitch's status was day to day in the lead up to this one. Is what went behind the decision to to go with him in the first half? I thought I well, you know, be candid with you. Uh, uh, I thought we needed to play him early, uh, but the biggest thing was is it worked out good that we could test it and he could get some confidence from it and have it not bother him and get through the game. So, you know, we, we, I told him at halftime he wasn't going to probably play the second half, but, but uh, I, thought he, I thought he did a nice job in the limited time. You could see he wasn't 100%, but you could also see that he wasn't far off. So that was positive. Back on the left. Uh, for Dewan and, and CB, um, can, can you explain what Remy does for you guys energy-wise? You, you know, you haven't had him most of the year, and he's been good the last few weeks, and that's, we've started to see that. But tonight it was, it was really there. Everybody's smiling, jumping off the bench during timeouts. C can you just explain what, what that feels like for you guys and, and this whole team? Mr. Harris, you can start us on that. Uh, well, Remy, we forgot, like, Remy was one of the best point guards in the country coming into the transfer portal. so. You know, he gives a lot of energy, and then you know, he comes in, takes a lot of pressure off me off the ball, too. Me and him can switch off the ball, and then, like, a, the, I back cut it today, and then, you know, he's a great passer, too, so I'll, it's just fun playing with him. He gives a lot of excitement on the bench, and then a lot of energy in the game, so it's, it's really good playing with him. Yeah, I'd say the same thing, just his passion, you know, uh, adds a lot to our team. Uh, we all kind of feed off of it, um, and then his dunk was really fun for us. He made a couple really flashy passes, like Juan said. Um, so he's great off the bench, comes in and scores a lot of points. Um, and is like Juan said, a really good passer, too. Um, you can tell his confidence is coming uh, back more and more. And uh, when he plays like that, we're tough to beat. Thanks, guys. Zach Boyer, Lawrence Journal World. Uh, for any of the guys, uh, I know, Remy, you were out there, and, 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 and Dewan and CB, you came in afterward. But uh, seven minutes left, 8-0 uh, run, and, and Bill pulls you out of the game. Um, I mean, what's, what's going through your mind as they make the line change and, and guys come back in? You know, what's that conversation like? And uh, what does it mean for your guys uh, trying to close out games now going down the stretch? Um, I think just holding us accountable for, for our standard. I think he holds us to a high standard, uh, which, you know, we love. Um, and, and it was just, you know, make, make corrections and, and get right. And it was just simple as that. We, you know, we, we wanted to uh, you know, go out and, um, you know, change, change the pace, change the game. And um, he was just holding us accountable, which I love him for. Yeah, we just had to come in um, and work on closing the game better. Uh, we didn't do a good job in the second half of, you know, taking care of the ball um, and just closing the game how we were in the first half. Uh, so we got to do a better job of that. And like Remy said, just, you know, holding us accountable um, to the standard that, that we need to play at. And then, Bill, I guess your point of view, you talked a little bit not too long ago about trying to figure out the rotations as you get in and these games get closer and tighter going on through. What yeah. do you need from these guys to show that they can, the second unit can really can hold themselves up there? Well, the, the, it wasn't these guys closing the game out. It was, you know, it was, it was our, our second unit, and Remy just happened to be out there. You know, we've got, we got six starters and maybe seven, you know, with Mitch when he's playing well. So, 
It's a fly, guys. Jeez. <laughs> so, so, jeez. Uh, 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 but, but, but I, I do, th I do think that uh, uh, the bench did not do a good job of playing the way that you need to play to win the possession. They were playing the, the game at, from what the score was, and and so uh, that was that was the only thing about tonight that I thought we didn't do very well. Six nine forward won't get to you, but a fly might. That's yeah. uh, we're okay on the right side. Trey Bradley for the University Daily Kansan here. This is a question for Remy um, on that steal and dunk that was brought up earlier. Just talk to, just uh, break down what you saw from Texas Southern on uh, on that steal. Uh, well, I saw him pick up the ball and, and look um, for a skip pass, and I was on the, I was on the weak side, so I had to play two, and I you know the pass was kind of uh, like a lob, so I kind of you know uh, played the passing lane and. Um, just saw it, saw the, saw the rim, and just went up there and dunked it. But it was just like a you know, defensive instinct play. Follow-up question for Remy, uh, for you as well. Um, three straight games with double-digit points. Uh, your, effic your efficiency has gone up each of the past three games. Uh, what has you know, helped you shoot a higher percentage? Um, just, you know, playing with pace. Uh, I don't really, you know, scoring is not, you know, what I, what I came here for. I mean, um, just came here to, to change pace and, you know, help my teammates. And, you know, if I have an open look, then I'm there to take it. If not, you know, I'll find these guys. Um, I just try to simplify the game and, you know, just been able to find myself. I, and, and it's been, anybody could go like every given night, you know, it just happened to have been mine. So that's the great thing about this team. It's not only me, Juan had his night. Um, and if it's not me, then other guys could step up. We're so talented and, and have a lot of depth. So um, just playing with pace and, and, and finding, finding um, the open shot or open man and just keep, keeping the game simple. You have a few more minutes left with Kansas on the right side. Uh, Coach Self, if, if you'll indulge me a little bit, uh, slightly off topic. Um, Robert Hughes was in the audience tonight watching his alma mater, uh, Texas Southern. And I know that you were inducted in the Hall of Fame with him uh, in 2017, I believe. Do you have any, any memories of that moment or, or any other memories of, of Coach Hughes through the years? You know, I, I, of course, he's one of the greatest coaches. You know, our sport's known at any level. and and uh, uh, there at Fort Worth Dunbar, and and uh, I, I, I got to I got to tell you, I thought Coach Hughes went to Tulsa. Uh, did he go to Tulsa as well? He started at Tulsa and finished at Texas Southern. Is that right? Okay, okay. So so because we took a lot of pride at TU, knowing that he was a uh, alum. Of to you, but yeah, fabulous coach, and he's coached a you know a ton of terrific kids there at at, at Dunbar, and, and uh, you know I I think it's you know it's it's really strange because people equate the best coaches sometimes to to guys that play on TV the most and win the most games on TV, and that's not really true. And he he's a guy. Uh, Ralph Tasker is another guy from Hobbs, New Mexico. Those guys are as good a coaches at any level. They just weren't seen near as much. But he's definitely deserving of being being in the in the hall. It's great to see Coach Hughes uh, commemorated here in the building. Every player gets to see about him as they take to the floor here at Dickey's Arena on the right hand side. Uh, Len Jennings with KNBC in Kansas City and Dwan. I just um, you talked the other day about. Uh, you kind of missed out your freshman year uh, when the tournament was canceled. What's it like? What was it like for you today? Experience with all the fans and just uh, uh, just March Madness in general. Uh, well, it's really it's, it's fun, you know, playing with my teammates. So they make it even more better. And then you know the crowd was great tonight, even though like the game went like all, close and all that. But it was it was great to be out there in front of everybody and then playing for my teammates, going getting the W. So I think it was good. And coach, same question, just kind of like, did you kind of see something with the, the players, with the crowd, March Madness kind of coming back, so to speak? Yeah, I, 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 I said this uh, yesterday, I think. Uh, um, I, I was probably more excited going into this tournament than I have been, at least from my memory, because, you know, the last two that we played in, I mean, last two, you know, we, we obviously couldn't go in 20, no one could. And last year, we were, it was a bubble, no fans, and, and we got COVID. So, uh, it wasn't a real deal. So th th this was good for us. And, you know, uh, 
we need to play obviously well on Saturday to really enjoy, you know, uh, the tournament because even though it's great to get in the tournament, you really benefit and get to really enjoy it if you can get to the second weekend. You know, everything happens so fast up until this first weekend that you really can't enjoy it, but then you'll kind of get a chance to maybe enjoy it a little bit more, and, and that'll certainly be our goal on Saturday. Last question. No? All right, right there. Hey, Bill, in the handshake line, did Johnny Jones tell you to, to go win it all, I guess, when you guys first Yeah, I don't remember exactly what Johnny said. You know, I've, I've known Johnny a long time, and so uh, 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 we, I, I consider us friends, and I think he would as well. And, and uh, but there's there's a there's certainly mutual respect between both of us, and and uh, I don't remember exactly what he said though. Okay. Thank you guys. Appreciate okay. Thank it. Thank you. Thank Good you. luck this weekend. Thank you. We welcome head coach Johnny Jones and student athletes from <coughs> Texas Southern University, John Jones, John Walker III, and Bryson Gresham. Start with an opening statement from Coach Jones and then take questions for Coach and the student athletes. Coach Jones. Uh, first of all, I just want to congratulate uh, Kansas. Uh, fantastic uh, program. Uh, coach Self has done a tremendous job there and they've done a did a fantastic job uh, tonight. Um, certainly want to make sure that give our guys a great deal of respect because of the way that they played. They fought extremely hard there in the uh, second half. I didn't think we played well there in the first half, but I thought the second half we played, continued to fight, and uh, made some plays and um, looked more resembling the type of team that, that we've been uh, most of the time uh, throughout the year. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, we uh, ran into a team that's very efficient, played extremely well, and uh, looked like one of the top you know, two or three teams in the country tonight, and that's the way that they played. Questions for Coach Jones or the student athletes? Go ahead on the left. Uh, Coach Jones, Jordan with the Topia Capital Journal. I, I sort of saw you and, and Bill in, in the handshake line. Did you tell them to go win it all as you guys, did you tell them to go win it all as you guys first? Yes, game? yes, 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 no, we've got it relationship and um, he's done a tremendous job and um, just wished him well he and I uh, think he's got a type of team that uh, can possibly go and if we're going to lose to somebody or won't be able to say at the end of the day it was to the champ uh, so uh, they're they're a very tough team on the right hand side uh, to 
Coach Jones and and uh, any of the any of the three student athletes. Uh, what kind of added hardship is it to have to play that playing game, and then two days later, not only have to play again, but play the number one seed in, the, in your region? Well, the good thing for us, we don't look for any excuses. We look for and we're result driven. Um, so tonight we've looked at it uh, as though that it was an advantage for us. Uh, we had a game under our belt. We had played. The other team was sitting there waiting, and we were hoping that they would come out and have a little rust on them. And uh, yeah, obviously that wasn't the case. Uh, but you can look back. We've had a long series because of the fact we just come out of a conference tournament and, uh, a day later getting on a plane, heading to play in a play-in game one day prep, and then you leave there and you're coming back uh, to play in another game. And, and so if you want to look for some areas um, that, that it's at a disadvantage, uh, you can, but we don't look at it that way. We look at it as uh, opportunities uh, for us, and unfortunately, we didn't get done. Any student athletes want to follow up on that? I feel the same way, really. Like, ain't no excuses. If we would have won, it would have been different. Yeah. <laughs> Far back, right side. Brent Swarneman, Houston Chronicle. Coach Jones, uh, Bill Self said a while ago, it's really tough to wait all day to play a game that almost starts at 10 p.m. because the, the adrenaline at some point dies out and so forth, and it's hard to stay amped up. Would you Would you agree with that? Well, I, I guess they needed to go at either 11 or 12 at night because they came out. It seemed like they were had uh, were pretty fired up to play and, and excited. And I think you know, anytime. Things don't go according to plan and on time, uh, according to your schedule. It's uh, a little bit different, throws you off because the guys are jumping off the wall and um, got their foot in the starter blocks. And uh, at the same time, it, it makes it difficult. Uh, but uh, again, you just make the adjustment at the end of the day. And um, I was like him, I was sitting back there and when it went in overtime, it was like, geez. And they're just hoping that it didn't go into a second overtime. For each of the players, setting aside the disappointment of tonight, how satisfying this season was for y'all having having won the SWAC tournament and, and then winning the first four game as well. Mr. Jones, you can start us on that. Uh, it was a very satisfying season. You know, starting the season off 0-7. You know, people tend to write a team like that off. Uh, but within this program, we know that we're resilient. And as long as we stay the course, stayed the course, uh, a positive outcome would happen, and that's what we found ourselves in a situation where we're playing for a SWAC championship. We won. Um, it's, it's always a great feeling to win uh, at that at that at that level, and then to come here and play in my senior year against a great team. Uh, it's, it's, it's a dream come true to finish my my college career like this, you know, with a ring and a great and a great uh, last game against a great team. Mr. Walker. Uh, yeah, this was, I mean, this year definitely been special for me. It just really solidified that, you know, coming to TSU was easily the greatest decision I ever made. And that really just cemented this year. Because back to back, that's just something I never even dreamed of coming here. So I think this year really just put it all together for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I love TSU. Mr. Gresham. I'll say this season was definitely just a blessing, honestly. Just like meeting new people and like just enjoying the journey. Actually, like this, these people I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. Like, until we get old. Back on the right-hand side. Coach Jones, uh, uh, there was a Texas Southern alum here tonight, a great alum, Te uh, Robert Hughes, uh, was in attendance. And I was wondering if you might be able to share some stories or memories of him through the years that you might have, um, and if any of the players might know who he is. You're talking about Coach Hughes from Dallas, Dunbar. Uh, yeah, Dunbar. from Dunbar High School. Uh -huh. I'm not sure if those guys would know. I've, I was fortunate enough to be the head basketball coach at University of North Texas uh, for 11 years. So I was very familiar with his program um, and the things that he did and the lives that he touched, the games he won, the young men that came out of his program, and just an amazing man. And uh, obviously a trailblazer and uh, someone uh, who's certainly special and uh, held it uh, to high regards. Uh, in, in the community and around the country uh, for the number of games that he won and, and the way that he's conducted and carried himself over the years. On the left-hand side. Dr. Ville's Inside HBC Sports Lab. Coach Jones, I wanted to ask you about having the ability to coach your son. 
you know, what has that been like? You know, everybody doesn't get an opportunity to go through that process. And then to culminate with back-to-back -back championships and a win in the first four, and then obviously playing into the 16. Talk about that a little bit, about that relationship. Yeah, I'm very blessed, and uh, God is good. It was something, you know, I've been coaching uh, his entire life, Division One basketball, so I didn't get a chance to do AAU basketball or anything else with his friends because of, uh, obviously, the rules. And then this opportunity presented itself uh, to be a head coach and have him on the team, and it's certainly been special. Um, it I, I could it couldn't couldn't have gone better. Um, at the end of the day, obviously for me, I had a lot of pressure on me, uh, coaching me. Wind up winning three state championships in high school. Uh, we went out to the University of Nevada. I was an assistant there for a year. With uh, Moss, Moss had worked with me at LSU. I went out and worked as assistant with him for a year, and uh, John went with me. We wind up going to the Sweet 16. He had conference championship in Sweet 16 under his belt, and then when he got with me, I had to make sure, you know, I wasn't the only coach that he had won a championship with. <laughs> so a lot of pressure on me, and we're very fortunate that we're able to win two advance and uh, do some special things together. And uh, so it's uh, really a, a, a dream come true uh, for how things played out for us. Young Mr. Jones, why don't you follow up with that and the experience? Uh, it's been, like you said, a blessing, you know. Uh, being able to watch him coach, you know, uh, been at practices, I've seen him and his teams do a lot of great things. And uh, to now be able to be, I've been a part of it for five years. It's. God works in mysterious ways. You know, we went to Nevada. Uh, I thought I was going to be at LSU. We went to Nevada, got to the Sweet 16, came to Texas Southern, made history our first year, most wins in the school history, Final Four CIT. Next year, you know, uh, I, think, I think, was that COVID? Yes. COVID happened. We were going to win that year, too. We were going to come back to the NCAA tournament that year. And then just so happened we, we – proved ourselves and went back to back. And, you know, I've seen the work he puts in. I've seen how much he cares about his players. Uh, he treats them, I'd be jealous sometimes. He treats them just like he treat, just like he treating me. So, you know, I, I've, 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 my respect for my father has always been at a high level, but these last five years has grown because I see how the other people look at him. And it's not just, he's a basketball coach. He's a father figure to a lot of people. And so, you know, I love this dude with all my heart and it's gone. It's going to hurt for a little while, but I know we're going to do something special, whether I'm sitting next to him in a polo coaching or um, wherever I'm at. He, I, I'm always going to listen to him. He always get great advice. So, you know, it's my dad. That's my dude. I love him, and it's been a great ride. Okay. We have time for a couple more. Coach Jones, if I'm not mistaken, you have a, looks like about nine out of the 14 guys that are seniors. But in this day and age, I guess eligibility is a gray area because of the COVID year. Do you see some of those guys maybe even coming back, although they're listed as seniors or graduates? Yeah, good thing for me, uh, if you just have four on the team that are not eligible to come back. They did, um, and John and um, uh, Bryson are, are two of them. Um, AJ was the other one, and Hopkins was the other. Those four guys, um, five of them were eligible to return uh, next year. And uh, if, um, things hold like they did a year ago, all those guys had a chance to leave and they chose to come back, and they chose to be at our place, and they did a deal, hashtag, uh, run it back at the end of last year after won the championship uh, because they enjoyed being around each other. The great thing about these guys, they've had the highest GPA in the history of the program over the last two years. Uh, they do things the right way, and I just told them in the locker room, I, used to, I looked forward to 3 o'clock every day for practice so I could be around them uh, because they are a special group. And uh, a lot of those guys have a chance to come back and, and do it. So um, I look forward you know, to hopefully having those guys back because I think they can continue to grow and even be a better team possibly next season. Any other questions? If not, man, congratulations on a fantastic Thank you so year. much and appreciate you guys. And go Tigers.